the time had come, the hour was now, and Jesus is found here in Luke's Gospel today as you join me. And thank you once again for joining me on this devotion. Here in Luke 22 we read, And it came, and he came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. Something lovely here as we read of Jesus returning as was his custom, as was usual for him to do. He comes to a place, the Mount of Olives, and here to call out to his heavenly Father. Something lovely in this to remind us even today that we need a place to come to, a place to be, maybe not the same place, but somewhere to go, somewhere to be quiet, somewhere to be reverent, somewhere to find peace with God and come before our Heavenly Father. For Jesus, however, this was the moment, this was the Thursday evening, the hours were now ticking away, and here he comes after the uh, the Lord's Supper, after he's been with them, uh, the disciples, he comes to the Mount of Olives, and it says, and the disciples followed him, and when he came out to the place, he said to them, pray that you may not enter into temptation, temptation to to run away, temptation to, to flee from the situation, to pray. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed. Here we have the Son communing with the Father just before the cross, just hours literally before he will be taken and crucified. The thought today of the one who gave up his life as a ransom for many. The one who came to die for you and me. How wonderful today, how serious today as a Christian to, to read these words, to be reminded of the cost that Jesus didn't bulk out of what he came to do. Lovely words here. Father, if you're willing, remove this cup from me, the cup of wrath that he was about to take upon himself when the darkness would fall, when he would be separated from the Father, when he would bear our sin, the sin of those who would trust in him, bear our sin upon the tree. Father, if you're willing, remove this cup from me. You can see his desire here as he's struggling in this great moment and understands our struggles, understands the times of our moments of decisions, understands because he too has went through so much. Yet here he was going to go through something that no one else could. The perfect sinless Son of God was going to die for sinners upon the cross. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Not my will, but yours be done. Here he was surrendering to the will of the Father. And there appeared to him an angel from heaven, strengthening him. He needed that help. He needed that comfort. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And the sweat became like great drops of blood falling to the ground. How earnest, how real this was. The pressure, even as the, the blood would mix with the water here and the sweat would become like great drops of blood falling to the ground, such was the pressure he was under. Lovely today to, to, for us to look uh, here at what the Christ has done for us, to be reminded this Easter time of the life and the death of our Saviour. And he rose from prayer. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping for sorrow. And he said to them, why are you sleeping? Rise and pray that you may not enter temptation. In Philippians chapter 2, wonderful passage, very much highlights about the humbling servant, the one who came not to do his will, but to do the will of the Father. And in Philippians 2 and verse 5, it says, Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was uh, in the form of God, did not count equality with God, a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, 
being born in the likeness of man and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Just in closing today, that reminder to us of the obedience of Jesus and and what does it mean to you and I? Uh, obedience to our God, who has loved us, died for us, that grace that has been poured out upon us, that wonderful Saviour. And if you don't know that Saviour today, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Saviour, focus again on what he has done. There was no other good enough to pay the price of sin. He only could unlock the gate of heaven and let us in. He only. One person only, Jesus Christ, could unlock the gate of heaven and let us in. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. May you know that this Easter time. May you reflect afresh on what Jesus has done for you. May I do that. May we be as our custom. Go to be alone with our God. To spend time with him. But to remember the cost that was for Jesus to bear our sin. Thank you very much once again for listening.